Okay. Let's talk about something we don't like to talk about when we're thinking about our favorite brands, and that is where do they fail? Now, Vibram is like my favorite brand, and I am kind of a loyalist when it comes to the things I like, and so that's why I kind of go all in with companies like Vibram, uh, like Tailwind Nutrition, um, like Airstream. I get excited about companies and I get excited about brands that I like and so I, I tend to be pretty loyal to them. But the reality is, you know, there's always problems. Uh, there are defects in, in manufacturing, there are bad designs that need to be tweaked or, or changed, there are just the reality that everything fails eventually, especially something like shoes. So let's talk about some of the key places and key models that have some issues with uh, problems, in, whether in manufacturing or where they wear out over time. It's not always really a... Uh, the fault of the manufacturer, sometimes it's just, this is where after hundreds of miles or after so much wear, this is where um, a certain shoe breaks down or falls apart or whatever. That's just reality, there's nothing wrong with that. But I like to have an idea of kind of where the issues might be. And I've found with my 40 plus pairs of Vibrams over the last eight years or so, there are some that have certain issues consistently and there are some that fail in certain places over time when I wear them out they kind of wear out the same way uh, which some of that's how I run or how I walk or whatever um, and then there are some that just something doesn't work quite right and um, you have to deal with that so let's get into some of those all right, well, I'm here in front of our lockers, and this is, we put these in what we call our boy cave or our locker room, kind of a family room where uh, we have our kids' uh, video games set up and TV and, and a bunch of sports stuff everywhere, and one of those are these awesome lockers, and so each one of them has one. But I have one, too. This is where my Vibrams are kept. Um, I'm not saying it's clean, but this is where I keep most of my shoes. I have a couple other bins that have some, and then, of course, some are just old and worn out. But what I want to do is talk about first, where do some of these Vibrams wear out over time? And I'll tell you the primary place for me that wears out over time is in between the big toe or basically on the inside of the big toe. Now I can show you that on multiple models. This is my all time favorite. V-Trail Gray. I've been dying to find another pair of these. This is my third pair of these that I've worn through. Um, and not because they're bad, but because I just wear the heck out of them. And the primary place that I get wear is in the inside of the big toe. And what that does is it just wears through to the point that my toe sticks all the way through it. Now, um, on the newest V-Trail 2.0s, they have some kind of taping in between toes. Maybe that'll keep that from happening, but these actually are a pair that I bought. I didn't run in these. I didn't do anything, uh, hike in them, whatever. These were everyday because these are my favorite style. These were everyday wear shoes. And so they wore maybe a little differently than when I'm running because I just walked and wore them around. So primarily on these, the same issue that I often have, which is in between the toes. Um, oftentimes, if it's in the right place, I'll just sew that back up. And, um, you know, they'll last me a lot longer. Again, it's more probably the way my toe pushes up against it, so I can't really complain about that. The other place these failed for me, again, after months of use, is here in the sole and right in the ball of the foot. And I find that usually when I wear through a pair of Vibrams, this is where I wear through them. Whether it's from running, and that's where I'm, I'm um, striking when I, when I run, or walking, um, you know, just wearing these around, it eventually wears through in that spot. Everything else on these, other than them being dirty because they've turned into like mowing shoes or work on the car shoes, uh, everything else has held up incredibly well. Vibram, make these again. These are the best shoes you've ever made. So, you know, why don't you throw back to some of those. I like the 2.0s. They're not this. Make these again. Okay, so let me show you some others. These are the CVTLS, another a great casual shoe. Actually, after I wore out my, my V-Trails, I started wearing these a little bit more. I've had them for several years, but I started wearing them more. 
um, just casually because I didn't have my V-Trails. If you can't tell, I like gray shoes and they don't make enough gray shoes. They always have to put weird colors everywhere and it drives me nuts. But um, same issue here. These I believe I've, I have uh, sewed up already and there's a little bit of wear still there in between the toes, although much better than I thought. The problem here, that same spot, these are more of a foam sole because they're not really made for running and, and hiking and all that stuff, so they're a softer sole. Um, I just wore through them. But again, I've had these for years, and so can't complain about those wearing because, again, the material otherwise is in quite good condition. Um, another shoe I wish they'd kind of make some more of. I like those. Uh, okay, so some others. These are uh, one of my primary... Uh, road running shoes, the KMD Sport. Um, they don't make these anymore. You can see on these, I wore through, so I sewed them up, and then I actually used shoe goo to try and coat that up and keep the, the laces from coming apart. But then eventually I wore through this other side as well. They also wore uh, pretty far down on, on the sole, although these have held up pretty well. I still sometimes will run on the treadmill in these um, because, again, Everything else holds up really well. If they could figure out, for me personally, if they could figure out a, a great way to tape the inside of these toes that would keep them from wearing through the material, um, or you know something that would kind of lead to uh, them lasting better, man, they just would last on and on. Um, here are some bequilas. These are one of the, actually, this is, not the pair, but this is the first model of Vibrams I ever got, was a pair of these blue bikilas, and started running in them. These have held up well because I haven't worn them a ton, um, but my older pair of them, same issue, in between the toes, wore those down. Now, I was having a conversation with somebody on uh, in one of our Facebook groups about the speed as a model, these are the speed model, and uh, one I don't know that I've talked about in any of my other videos, but I've actually kind of pulled these out and worn these a bunch lately. These, um, again, are a great looking shoe. I actually have the black and the blue. These are relatively new. Um, I bought them off eBay from another person that had worn them sparingly, and these I've had for years and years. Uh, the same issue is in between the toes. That's where these have worn. But the thing about these speeds you have to look out for is this inside where, this, where the upper meets the sole. And on this particular one, you can see that where it's worn is the material itself. The mesh has pulled apart. Um, so it's not the glue. It's actually the, the material itself. And... Uh, that happened relatively early on, and it's held up okay, but it's happened on both sides of this sh of these shoes, so you have to be careful about that wear. On these, what I found, I just re-glued these, is that the glue came apart right here, along on both sides. And so I just spent yesterday with shoe goo, and actually I need to do a little bit more, because I wore them today and I found that I didn't do a very good job here. So the process for that is pretty simple. And I'll, uh, I'll show you how to do that here in a bit as well. Next pair, these are the V runs. And uh, these are what I primarily nowadays run roads in. And I was planning on running um, my 100 miler on gravel here in about a week um, on these. Problem is I was running in them the other day and I felt a hard rock in my heel and I realized that's a big hole right in the middle of the heel. Now that's not normal for me. And what I think that I've figured out about these is because these V runs have a little bit of cushion, they have a little bit thicker of a sole. Um, I don't land on my heel, but I drag it sometimes. So as I'm bringing my foot down to land on my, uh, the ball of my foot, I drag that heel a little bit because it hangs down. Plus these just don't fit me well. Um, these are 43s, which is what I wear on everything, and they're just too big. They're they're really loose, and I've tried 42s, and they're too small. There's just not, I need a 42 and a half of these. But I wear the 43s because, you know, it works okay. It's just, they're, they're just a little bit too big. And so I think I drag that heel as I'm coming to a stop. But again, these are over 400 miles 
uh, I've run on pavement uh, and some gravel in these. And really, other than that hole in that heel and the wear in this one, they look almost new. I mean, the, the upper has held up completely. There is no wearing in between the toes. Um, so I can't really complain. This is probably more an issue of me not making sure that I've held to my form when I get tired running. Um, I may not do as good of a job of getting my feet lifted up and, and land on my, on the forefoot of my, of my foot. I, and I drag that bottom just a little bit too much. Um, but these are great. I also have, uh, the yellow highlighter version and, um, I had some trouble with these. The, the drawstring um, didn't hold, and since they're already kind of big, it always loosened up. So I had to put an aftermarket um, third-party, you know, lock lace kind of a thing. Um, but these have probably, I don't know, at 450, 500 miles on them. And actually, I don't know, I've done a better job because I have not worn through the heel or anything. They're still in good shape. There's some threads coming apart and all that kind of stuff. But again, what do you expect? All I do is wear them to run usually pretty long distances. Um, so those are, those are some of the normal ways that uh, my Vibrams wear. And for the most part, none of that is a design flaw or a manufacturing problem or a defect or anything like that. None of those things I think should deter anyone from any of those shoes. Now, a lot of those models they don't make anymore, but they held up really well for a really long time and eventually shoes wear out. And, and so that's all normal, but there are some that I think could use some improvement. Okay. Let's talk about a couple models that I just don't think hold up well. Um, and really most of this isn't going to be helpful because they're models that are no longer for sale. So I don't know that maybe this isn't helpful at all. Um, but one of them is a key one that is still for sale, that is still probably one of their better sale, uh, sellers that I think has a design flaw or at least a, a manufacturing something. It, it just doesn't hold up very well. So let's start with some of the older ones and just a couple things on, on these. So here's the first pair and, and these are, I could pull out actually several pairs of these um, because I've got these and I've got the Bormio boots as well, but any of the kangaroo leather Vibram. So these are the Trek LR, I think, and these are the Speed LS. I don't remember. These were exclusive to REI uh, several years ago. Anyway, both of these kangaroo leather uh, Vibrams, just like the Bormio boots that I have. And, and one of the problems that I found with kangaroo leather Vibrams, it has been just the gluing. And one of the biggest problems with all of these shoes has been all along these spots where the glue just doesn't hold and they start to come off. These, you can see I've already shoe glued, used glue before and it's coming off. Um, I've had similar problems with uh, these versions. This one actually has held up so far, but I can see kind of the beginning of that glue pulling apart I wonder sometimes if this is why they don't continue to make this style of, of shoe, because these are the best, like literally one of the best things they've ever made. Uh, I wear these, I'm a pastor and I wear these Sunday mornings to church. I wear these to work, uh, many days. They, they have this great, like, they look like a catcher's mitt kind of a look to them. They're amazing. Uh, and they quit making them. And I, I, I think the only, you know, to me, the only reason is maybe because of that issue. They don't always hold up. The glue sometimes is trouble. And especially in between the toes, the glue would sometimes come out. That happened on my first pair. This is my second pair. Um, and you can see some of that happening even here on the, the leather speed um, that are coming apart a little bit. Again, I've had these for years. I've worn the heck out of them. I'm not complaining. Ultimately, a little shoe goo and and they're okay but that's one place where if you get those you just have to expect it I just got a pair of Bormios that were never worn and they had that issue right away and so I had to kind of glue up the edge and uh, now they're good as new but 
that is an issue. The second one I want to talk about are the Lantras, which again are not made anymore. Uh, they were a winter shoe. It's actually one I wish they made more now. Um, with the taped seams, they were water resistant. They're warm as heck. In fact, your feet would sweat in these better than any of the other winter ones that they've sold. And I have a video about what, what Vibrams to wear in the winter. So um, feel free to check that out. None of them are as warm as these and none of them are water resistant like these. Um, the biggest problem is there was one fail point when it came to water resistance. Well, maybe two. One, the same problem between the toes. And once you wear through the toes, you're gonna get water in there, especially if it's snowy. The other is this strap. And where this strap goes in was always a point where it pulled apart the shoe and, and moisture got inside of there. I tried to glue it, it never worked because that is a moving part. Um, that was always an issue. These also were not the most comfortable shoes. They were pretty hard to get your toes into, at least for me. Um, and uh, so maybe that's why they don't make them anymore, but these were pretty legit winter running shoe. But let's talk about the one that I really think is a concern because they are still sold today and that is the KSO Evo. And here's the problem with the KSO Evo. And I think, um, again, I think this is a problem that they need to really consider redesigning. And it is just the material of these. Um, this is a pair I've had for quite a while. I've, I've worn them around, I've run in them, they've been fine. I've had the same issue of, you know, kind of wearing between the toes. I, I'm not mad about that. But on both of these, you can see that the, the glue didn't come out, but the material completely split. Here on the inside of this one, here on the inside of this one. And I have found that that, I think, is really a design flaw. I just got a brand new pair of these from Vibram and uh, have worn these maybe 10 times. No running, just wearing them around, and they already are pulling apart in that exact same spot, almost completely brand new. Um, so I'll be honest, I wouldn't buy any more of these. Uh, unless they make an adjustment to their material and, and the way they glue those into um, that section, I don't know, to me they're not worth the price because um, this isn't a failure of 500 miles and tons of wear and they eventually break down. This is just a, a, a problem with the design and the manufacturing of this shoe. And if it were me, I'd maybe look for something else. Uh, I think they're great. Otherwise, I wish maybe if they took the, uh, the V Alpha material, which has been a much stronger material. I like these V Alphas. In fact, they look very similar to the KSO Evo. Um, if they would use that material that might hold up a whole lot better and just put on the KSO Evo sole and uh, use the cut of the Evo. Because the only thing about the Alphas I don't like is this like high cuff all the way around. I prefer the uh, more, I guess to me, more tennis shoe looking drop down cuff at the top. Um, I just don't like the look of these as much. But man, the material is significantly improved from the KSO Evo. So I wish they would adjust that because if, it, if it, I've had 40 some pairs, I've been wearing them nonstop for eight years. If you're anything like me, you're going to be disappointed in the KSO Evo and the way that they hold up. Okay, so that's our that's my video. Um, I know I don't like talking about the things that don't go well on these because I like to uh, encourage people about them because I love them and I wear them every day and, and I, I don't plan on changing. But everything fails sometimes. It's nice to know what to look for. It's nice to know what kind of to expect. And uh, maybe you can um, adjust the way you use them in a way that might lead to longer life and continued use. But again, the reality is if you go buy running shoes somewhere else, you're going to spend just as much or more as buying a pair of these and they're gonna last you a third as long in most cases. Um, so uh, can't really complain about the manufacturing that Vibram has done. I hope they continue to improve and maybe tweak things as they often try to do to make things better. My plea to the company, bring back some of the ones that you've made in the past that are really good. Something like the Speeds, 
give us some new colors and some new uh, ways of having uh, this design. Put a, maybe a more more recent sole on that same kind of design. Give us something cool like this because um, they are uh, they're a great shoe that that we really miss. Uh, bring back some of these leather ones. I, if the glue is a problem, you know, maybe look for a different way to do that. But man, these were a great shoe, um, and uh, especially brown. The new black leather, I'm not down for the slick black leather, but give us some brown, that'd be awesome. Um, also, again, just make these available again. We'll all buy them. Just, just do it, because they're awesome. These were a great shoe. And yeah, the CBTLS had laces, and you came out instead with the, with the hemp, which I like also. These, these hemps are great. Um, but, you know, maybe a light gray. Or something that looks a little less penny loafer and a little more, you know, casual athletic shoe. I don't know. Something there would be cool as well uh, to bring those back. Uh, the other thing I'd encourage you to bring back are the Speed XC, the taped seams um, on these. Now, I've never liked this color scheme, the navy blue with the orange. And then it's got, like, brown here and black back here. I mean, no. But... In the rain, um, man, it's nice to have some that don't get your feet wet immediately when you're walking around a parking lot or to go into a store. Maybe bring back something like this, a little better design. Um, again, new new uh, soles, and uh, I think I think we'll buy them because these are some good designs that you've done. All right, well, thanks for. Uh, sticking with me this long. I hope that, that you have a great um, experience with your Vibrams. Let me know how yours hold up or maybe how they wear differently than mine. And uh, keep an eye out. I'm going to have another video here really quickly about how to um, glue up the ones that are coming apart. And hopefully that'll help you out as well. So check that out. Cause I